Apparently people die at rocket festivals. That's gonna hit somebody's house, I think. They don't go up and they explode outward. It's not good news. <laughs> rockets that they're gonna fire. Yeah, it looks pretty intense. I don't know what to expect, but we're here. The first day consisted of so many different dances, some traditional and some a bit more modern. People were dressed in various costumes and theatrical attire, most of which I could not understand the rhyme or reason for. <laughs> Bren also got his chance to take part in the festivities. The next day was hot and clear. The perfect day to watch some rockets. People are shooting homemade rockets, super big rockets, into the air. We're gonna try and capture as much as we can. We have a pretty good view of where at least this like first rocket is gonna come from. There's relatively few safety precautions with these homemade rockets. And it's not like there's a protective barrier or anything. These rockets are like huge. There's like dozens and dozens. Some of them have like hundreds of kilos of gunpowder in them. And if they don't go up and they explode outward, it's not, it's not good news. Apparently people die at rocket festivals because of things like that. So fingers crossed, we are not in the crossfire of anything going awry, but it's pretty crazy to see it so close. That was way louder than I was expecting. That went f***ing high too. So I'm sure you guys have noticed, but that is not a bamboo rocket as they would have used traditionally. They have switched to using blue PVC waterline and now they pack that full of gunpowder and use it as a rocket. I don't know if that's more safe, or why, why they changed from bamboo to PVC, but maybe not the most eco
not coming down like I expected it would, just like, like flipping back and forth through the air towards the village as well. So that's going to hit somebody's house, I think. Everybody's making bets on how long it will stay in the air, if they beat the other rockets or not. Everybody's exchanging money. people making rockets in the first place. A few days before, we got some historical insight from a rather large toad. So we're in Yasatan. There's not a whole lot of things in terms of like big attractions and whatnot, but there is this massive toad structure slash museum we just found out. This is like the big thing to come and see here. So. We're here. We're at the big toad. We're gonna go see what it's like. <laughs> so there's not only toads in this museum. There's also a whole floor dedicated to the Rocket Festival. Everyone is telling us about the Rocket Festival and all these crazy rockets. This is showing kind of all these different sizes and all the gunpowder and ways that they make them. Definitely dangerous. <laughs> Some of these rockets say that they're like 120 kilos of gunpowder and one is like 500 kilos of gunpowder. The festival takes place at the beginning of rainy season, which is also the start of rice planting. The story goes that there was a toad king, a respected ruler of the land. Unfortunately, the sky king, or the rain king, was pretty jealous of him, and in turn, he withheld rain from the land for seven years. Long story short, the Naga King and the Toad King essentially team up to defeat him. And now every year, the Naga is sent up to the sky to remind the rain king of his duty. Beyond the rockets, there was a frenzy of various entertainment. Multiple stages, all blaring music, dancing, gaudy costumes, carnival games, and plenty of drinking. The night ended with a concert where the Bun Bang Fai song played multiple times. There was endlessly flowing beer filling our cups and Isan people just generally letting loose and enjoying another loud, raucous, slightly dangerous rock festival. If you guys enjoyed this video, please consider liking and subscribing for more of our adventures in Thailand. Thanks for watching and see you next week.